everybody. Welcome again to Faith on Friday Extra. This series is all about highlighting people, topics, and businesses that I hope you will find interesting, entertaining, absolutely mesmerizing, as well as always, always encouraging. And I'm your host, Ricky Smith. Today, I need to introduce you to Philip Banks Sr. Phil is a obviously a fan of Faith on Friday, which I totally appreciate. And he is also retired military. He is a motorcycle enthusiast and he is the vice president of Rough Riders Sport Bike Club. Phil, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Ricky. Oh my gosh, it's my pleasure. Not just because you're wearing the Faith on Friday shirt, but because <laughs> I know what we're going to talk about and I'm excited to hear about it. So you are a huge motorcycle guy, right? I am. Okay. Talk to me a little bit about how you got into motorcycles and when. My father and probably all his brothers, my uncles, were into motorcycles. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just a part of my blood, a part of my nature. I've been riding them since 16. Oh, wow. Now, where are you from, actually? Are you from Cleveland, here? Ohio? You're no, Ohio. I'm, I'm okay. born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. Right. And they're so they're doing motorcycles big in Cleveland, Ohio. Always. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? So now, how did you get involved in bike clubs, in motorcycle clubs? So I've always liked motorcycle clubs, but when I got here to El Paso, this was the first time I had the opportunity to try to join one. So the one that I was really interested in joining is called the Rough Riders, and that's R-U-F-F-R-Y-D-E-R-S, like BMX, uh, oh. is one of the artists of the brand. And so uh, we didn't have one here when I got here in 2004. However, an opportunity presented itself in 2006, and that's when we started the chapter. Okay. Oh, you guys started the chapter, and you're the yes, vice I'm president. one of the co-founders. Oh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. My gosh. Yeah. So, being a motorcycle guy who's been into motorcycles forever, you've <clears throat> been in motorcycle bike clubs, and you're currently the vice president. I'm just going to ask you the hard question: What ask. happened March third, 2018? There's a bit of a backstory to that. Okay, but okay. that was the day that I had a motorcycle accident, and it was it was pretty severe. Um, first of all, I had the, an idea that I was going to have a motorcycle. This is the backstory. I had the idea that I was going to have a motorcycle accident. I was warned, uh, okay. and I knew it was going to be severe, but I didn't heed those warnings, and I'll talk about that a little later. But the day that I had the accident on March third, two 2018, a friend called me up, asked me if I wanted to ride. I told him I did, decided to put my leather jacket on. I had a name on the back of the leather jacket. I covered it with duct tape because I didn't want anyone to see it. I knew I was going to go out and ride recklessly. I already planned that. I planned to go out there and have fun, mm. in my words. And if I felt like breaking the law, I left the house feeling like if I wanted to do that, that I was going to do it. Um, I planned to do that, uh, knowing in my head that I was already warned that I was going to have a severe motorcycle accident. Gosh. So linked up with my friend, uh, hopped on a very local road, which is called Trans Mountain. The weird thing is, I rode up Trans Mountain to link up with my buddy. Mm -hmm. And then as I was riding down, it's when I had the accident. Wow. So can you talk a little bit about the accident? I mean, how fast were you going? What happened? I, I was well over 100 miles an hour. Wow. Um, I know. <laughs> wow. It, it really isn't that significant if you know what you're doing, so to speak. And yeah, I felt like I knew what I was doing. Yeah, the guy whatever yeah, right <laughs> i know <laughs> and so i felt like i was skilled enough i wasn't going as fast as i had gone previously there were other times i've been on that mountain doing 150 miles an hour oh my gosh. Uh, but that particular day i to shorten the story i uh i misjudged the lane in a way 
And so I was going to get on the shoulder and pass an 18-wheeler that I saw ahead of me. I was in the far left lane. The 18-wheeler is in the right lane on a two-lane road. I was going to pass the 18-wheeler, but on the shoulder, on his far right. And so when I got to the edge where the shoulder was at, there was no shoulder. Um, So what I perceive happened now is that he was actually on the shoulder, Mm -hmm. uh, which is very common for 18-wheelers because the heel is pretty steep, goes up, goes down. So a lot of the 18-wheelers will get on the shoulder and then they put their hazards on. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any hazards. But my intent was to get off to the shoulder, pass them on the shoulder. When I got there, there was no shoulder. Right. There was a wall, though. Wow. So ultimately, I end up hitting the wall after I got on my front brakes as hard as I could. Wow. Ended up hitting the wall. It jackknifed me in the air. Uh, I was kind of flat out, almost like Superman, but not quite flying like Superman. Wow. And spinning like a helicopter blade. So it catapulted me up up in the air about 10 to 15, maybe 12 feet high, Mm -hmm. uh, spinning like a helicopter blade. I hit the side of the mountain. Of course, what goes up must come down. Yeah. So came down and had several injuries. Okay. Now let's fast forward a little bit. So now you've had this accident and it's horrifying. And now you're in the hospital. Okay. What happened during your stay in the hospital? After several scans and examinations, they found out that I had pretty much tore up my body. Uh, Two days later, March 3rd, or March 5th, I'm sorry, 2018, I -hmm. ended up dying. Wow. You you say that so nonchalantly. And I, you know, knowing your family, to have been there, to see that. You died. How long were you dead? Do you know? Uh, it wasn't long here. Uh, probably ah. just a couple of minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, my wife and a friend that was at the hospital at the time, I, I was held in both of their hands the day I died. And so uh, they said probably about five minutes or so. My goodness. Uh, that in itself is just absolutely ridiculous. So when you came back, if you will, what what were some of the things that was going through your mind or, or what happened then? Well, even before I came back, I had like a, a near-death experience. Oh, sure. Which I talk about uh, in a book that I'm writing. But Stop I had a right near-death there. experience. Stop right there. You said you're writing a book. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, right. you're hearing this firsthand. <laughs> What's the name of the book, Phil? It is entitled, The Day God Say It, No More. The day God said no more. And yes, when's your book due to come out? Uh, I'm trying to get it out this summer. So Hopefully summer 2020. In the next couple of months. Yes. Okay. Okay. And where will people be able to find the book when it does come out? It's going to be on Amazon, Lulu, and Barnes and Noble. Man, that's going to be fantastic. So in your book, are you talking more about the near-death experience, the accident, your family? What's the book kind of entailing? And don't give it away because we want people to buy your book. I won't give away all the details. So it starts off talking about uh, a tad bit about my life. Mm-hmm. And then the what I was mentioning earlier about the backstory to the accident, because I mm-hmm. was, again, I was warned about I was going to have an accident. And right, there were some other said. things that were going on. So okay. it talks about that and why didn't I heed those warnings? And then it gets into the out-of-body experience, what I saw, uh, who I heard, mm-hmm. um, and then the things that happened to me in detail because there were some things that happened uh, during the places that I went. Sure. That is going to be a fascinating book. I can't, I can't wait to see that. Hey, everybody, while you're here, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And we want to make sure that you can leave us a comment as well. And don't worry, we're going to put all of Phil's contact information in the description below, because I want to hear and see and get the rest of this story. So Phil, before I let you go, you know, we have to play a game, right? All right. Okay. We got to play our game. Woo! And the game is called <laughs> This or That. All, All right? right. Pretty simple. I'm going to give you the choice of one or two things, 
as fast as you can and on the off the top of your head you just tell me which one you like the best are you ready okay all right Here i'm we ready go. mcdonald's or burger king burger king batman or captain america batman yay going to the movies or movies at home movies at home make the call or send the text oh, that's so difficult <laughs> because i do both <laughs> make the call all right snickers or three musketeers snickers dressing up or dressing down i'm a dress down guy <laughs> <laughs> cats or dogs dogs for sure all right thanksgiving or new year's eve thanksgiving right. new year's eve uh, new year's eve because there's less cooking <laughs> <laughs> okay fry it or grill it uh grill it all right Elf. morning person or night owl i'm both <laughs> oh, wow. insomnia fire. you never sleep <laughs> i don't sleep and finally what is your favorite olympic sport um whew. Track and field. All right. You all have gotten an amazing chance to meet Phil Banks, but before we let him go, Phil, what is the one thing you would like to tell people like yourself who are motorcycle enthusiasts? What would you like to say? I guess I would really like to say is, one, you turn your own throttle. <laughs> <laughs> and two, listen to that small voice in your head when God is speaking. Wow, that's huge. And I'm sure that is a reference to what would happen to you and what's gonna, what we're going to find out later in your book. That Phil, is. Thank you so much for joining us. And I appreciate the time you take to tell your story. Thank you for having me, Ricky. Not a problem. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. My name is Ricky Smith, and we'll see you next time on Extra.